Hi, it's November 23rd, Monday. So happy Monday, everyone. I'm so glad you came to join to do quiet time with me this morning. Now, yesterday, you learned that King Nebuchadnezzar was so amazed by how God saved Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego from the fiery furnace. And he even made a law saying that if anybody says anything negative or bad about this God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego will be punished. Wow, it sounds like he encountered this mighty God for himself. Did he really? Well, let's find out. But before we do that, let's go to today's passage. It's Daniel chapter 4, verses 1 to 17. So let's read it together. I, King Nebuchadnezzar, am writing this letter. I was at home in my palace. I was content and very successful. But I had a dream that made me afraid. I looked up and saw a huge tree standing in the middle of the land. It was very tall. It had grown to be large and strong. Its top touched the sky. It could be seen anywhere on earth. Its leaves were beautiful. It had a lot of fruit on it. It provided enough food for people and animals. Under the tree, the wild animals found safety. The birds lived in its branches. Every creature was fed from that tree. In my visions, I saw, I saw a holy one. He was a messenger. He was coming down from heaven. He said, cut down the tree break off its branches, strip off its leaves, but leave the stump and its roots in the ground. Let it stay in the field. Put a band of iron and bronze around it. The decision is announced by the holy messenger. So all who are alive will know that the most high God is king. He rules over all kingdoms on earth. He gives them to anyone he wants. Sometimes he puts the least important people in charge of them. Amen. Amen. Now, this is a letter actually King Nebuchadnezzar, he wrote himself. So that's why all of a sudden he says, I, the king, the Nebuchadnezzar. So he tells his story by actually telling about the, the dream that he had. So in his dream, he saw this big and tall tree that will just reach the sky. And it was just beautiful and strong tree and it had a lot of fruits on it. But all of a sudden, he sees this messenger coming down from heaven. And then he, the messenger comes and he says, cut down the tree. And then this tree will have a mind of animal for seven years. Oh, he was so troubled by it. So King Nebuchadnezzar, he knew right away it was not just an ordinary dream. So he called Daniel, the interpreter, interpreter of the dream. He says, Daniel, can you help me? I don't understand this dream and I'm troubled by it. So Daniel tells us actually the meaning of the dream. The tall and big tree is actually how you, the King Nebuchadnezzar, see yourself. You're so proud. You think that you're so great. You're so might. And then all the accomplishment that you have achieved is so great. You become too big in your own eyes. And God's going to punish you if you keep on, keep staying as this prideful. And he said, oh, oh, okay, okay. But guys, do you know that God hates proud heart. God is against it. The reason why God is against it is because the pride, the people with proud heart, they resist God in a sense because they take the place of God and they take the throne of God and says, I deserve to be better. I deserve to be worshipped. I deserve, be, deserve to be praised. And God hates that. God cannot handle that. So God has no choice but to, but to punish the King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, We'll find out more about how he responded to this warning that God gave him. But friends, it is very important to know that God resists the proud because the proud people resist God and God hates pride. And sometimes our talents and smarts and the accomplishments can blind us to think that we are great. Bible says that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble because the humble people are quick to acknowledge they need God, okay? So friends, are you prideful? Um, when do you find yourself getting prideful? Sometimes I struggle with that all the time. Pride comes at a high price. Don't, don't pay it. So let's ask God to guard our hearts against pride, okay? So let's pray. Dear Jesus, we learn from today's passage that you hate pride, that we don't want pride to poison our hearts. And just as Jesus, who came and he humbled himself and came to us as a helpless baby, he suffered and he died on the cross just for all of us. And we know that we can learn from our humble Savior. 
So, Lord, I pray that you will teach us what it means to be humble like you. And we want to fall in love with you more and more, and we want to get to know you more and more so that we can be more like you, Jesus, our humble Savior. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.